Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today I was gonna do a video, a quick video on some farm history and some history of our family with this farm because the farm that we're farming on, parts of it are actually like extremely old. They were built like in the early 1900s when people were first coming over and settling in Washington. So it has a, a really cool and unique history. And one of the things that I like to show off right away is the beams in this barn here that we still use to this day have trees in it like all these beams all along here they're all trees that were originally logged on the property itself and then used to build this barn which is super super neat and there's all there's also a couple super funny things about this farm that i'm gonna be talking about later on in the video but moving right on to the next stuff is this farm's been around for long enough that it's seen um like the progression through technology in dairy farming so this right here is a flat barn i'll get up over this gate over here and that over there is a normal milking parlor so anyways like i was saying this this farm's seen a lot of technological advancement advancements over the years this flat barn here was built in the 40s the farm itself was built in the early 1900s but this is something that we found when we were cleaning out the other day so right here is what was the original design for a milking parlor. You had a head hole right here and a head hole right here. So you could have two cows come in and you'd right here in the middle, you'd have one machine hanging down. So you'd have a cow here, cow here, and then you'd come in. And when you came in to hook them up, you'd have this little seat right here that we found while we were cleaning out. You'd have it strapped to you. So you'd be able to sit down on the seat and then work on one cow get her all dipped and wiped and whatnot and then you'd hook her up and then you'd flip around and you know set up the next cow and then you'd flip the machine over and hook it up but i thought that was cool this little seat maybe next video i'll strap it to myself and wear it around and see if i can pogo on it these little spring seats that are real adjustable and whatnot and that you know and this was a it was like a six cow flat barns you see the metal stalls right here go all the way along but yeah, that was the original parlor that was first built on this farm. And I'll go and give you guys a look at our current parlor and what's all been done to this. So over here in our current parlor, things have become a lot more modernized since the day of the flat barn, but still mostly the same. Um, in 77, they built this parlor in here and it was originally a double three or a double four. So it only came to here and you could milk four cows on each side at a time. And then in the late 80s, they extended it out to a double six. So you can milk six cows on each side at the same time. And then back in 2015, me and my brother and my dad extended it out to a double eight. And that's how it sits now. So, you know, like in the flat barn, you'd only have one machine for every two cows. But in here you have a machine on each side for your cows. But um, this, me and my brother found this monstrosity if you pay attention here and look at this machine and the way that this is set up this is we found this over here while we were cleaning out it's one of the original designs for um, a milking machine so you see you still had your four where it would go on you'd hook up to the nipple or hook up to the nipples then you had your main vacuum line here and then your two pulsators right there with some other vacuum lines it looks like all around it but this thing is so heavy it's all stainless steel i just thought that was super neat because i mean you can see it's like looking at like an old car versus a new car if i get it side by side here how much it's changed over the years but you know relatively the same design just lighter weight material you know a peephole instead of this because like this would have had like a big gasket in the middle and it would have all been clamped together I thought that was super neat that we were able to find that so we could show the side-by-side -side comparison. All right, I got one final fun farm fact for you guys, and then we'll talk about my own family's history because this farm has not always been ours. We actually, my dad came here about 20 years ago and started farming here and took over from the guys who had it before because me and my brother are only second generation dairy farmers. My dad started it himself, but, save that for a second so if you look out over that way and you see the blackberry bush lines 
So right down over there is a slough, and you know, if you don't know what a slough is, it's just like a word for stagnant water that, you know, it fills up with water and it's there year round. That used to be where the Skagit River came through. So that's where the farm used to be built out there. And then in 1949, they were afraid that the river was gonna come too close and take the farm out and like swipe it, you know, get it all, you know, just like be gone in the river. So they disassembled the barns, moved them up here, and then the houses, that house and this house, of course they've had additions added onto them since. You know, they were a lot smaller back then. They drug them both from over there up to here on the high ground using horses and mules. And then, so that ha they did that in 1949. Not even a year later, in 1950, there was a big flood and the river went like three miles that way. So you can imagine what it would have been like to be those guys who put all in all that work, drug the houses up over here, disassembled all the barns, moved them up here, and then less than a year later, the river changed courses and is like now three miles away from the farm and we're not in any danger of it getting wiped out. I just thought that was the funniest thing. Those guys were probably pissed, but I thought it was hilarious when I heard that story for the first time. All right, now we gotta talk about my family's history farming. So back around 40-ish years ago, when my dad, he got out of the military, he was a tank mechanic in the military, and he was milking cows for a couple different people back then, and he decided that he wanted to become a farmer. So what he had to start out with, he had a wheelbarrow, a pitchfork, and one heifer calf. And that's how he got into farming. And he started raising heifers and then breeding them back and selling springers. And then eventually he grew his herd enough that he started milking, I think 20 cows in like a single stall flat barn. And then he quickly outgrew that. And well, he got up to milking around 50 cows. And once he outgrew that, he moved his farm from where it was at the time, which was like over a couple miles from where we are now. And he started renting out this place and he was able to get up to around 150 cows milking on this farm but then back in 08 when you know the recession happened and everything we had to sell all of our cows and that was a pretty rough time but in 2000 sorry about that i had my uh, camera battery die but anyways like i was saying in 2009 we were able to come back from being from selling off all of our cows and we bought a small herd and we were able to start milking 50 cows once again and then since then we haven't had any issues besides i mean maybe last year 2020 covid but we've grown our farm and we're now milking over 250 cows with over 600 head of cattle so i think it's more about a success story for my own father than me and my brother's success story of course we've helped him somewhat along the way but he's you know he's done crazy things but since me and my brother have been able to start helping him we have quite the accolades of different milk quality awards. We get one every single year. And then this one that we got back in 2010 to 2011, this is the little golden cow. It was for shipping the highest quality milk to Dairy Gold for 12 months straight in the 2010, 2011 milk year. The other awards are just for, the other awards that we have all sort of out, like we have so many now that we don't even really hang them up. But those ones are just for like relatively high quality milk, like keeping our somatic cell count under like a certain uh, number. It's like, you know, it's pretty low. Like we are super thorough, but that one right there, it's all about the super high quality milk. So that's what we're all about now. That's how we've kept our, our business moving forward and being able to milk more cows and put ourselves in a position that we'll never have to sell out again, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, that's, for the most part, I mean, that's most of our history, I'm pretty sure, because, I mean, we haven't been, like, it's not like we're, you know, super generational farming family. It's just our dad decided, he's like, yeah, I want to be a dairy farmer. And, of course, me and my brother both raised as dairy farmers now. And we're just like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty neat deal. But I'd love to hear, you know, if you guys have any crazy long family histories or any funny stories about how your farm came to be or any wild stuff. I'm, I mean, we have a lot more crazy stories. That's just, like, the gist of our history I'm gonna try and fit into one video but um if you were just stopping by for a quick farming history lesson thank you for watching um anyone else though that just wants to stay to the end of the video I'm gonna do a little bit of chores here with my brother we got some cleaning up to do but you're welcome to stay till the end of the video and keep on watching or if you're leaving you know thank you for watching please subscribe but yeah 
Um, let's hop into some chores here. That's enough history lesson for one day. All right, this thing just looked like too much fun not to try it out. I think I got it on the right way. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get it off though, because if you look, this buckle thing right here is all rusty. I think I might have locked it into place, but like, you got like the little spring. Oh God! And it, yeah. So you like sit down. Um, you sit down. You get your cows all cleaned off, hooked up. I guess it, you'd be over here doing it. You'd come in. And you, bam, cow, get the machine, bam, flip around, sit on the ground. Hey, this thing's sick. I might have to take one of these next time I go out to like a bonfire or something, you know, having a fire out in the field, talking with your buddies, chilling there, and you're just like, oh yeah, let me take a seat. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit temperamental. I don't have it all the way tight enough, but... I mean, he'd be like duck hunting, you know? Seat equipped. Yeah, this thing's awesome. Okay, now I gotta figure out how to get it off. Um, do that off camera.